All right, good afternoon. The Secretary General this morning spoke at the Security Council's open debate on the protection of civilians in armed conflict. He said that during his 10 years as High Commissioner for Refugees, he saw the tragic results of our failure to protect civilians caught up in conflict in refugee camps and settlements that he visited all over the world. But the Secretary General noted that despite our efforts, civilians continue to bear the brunt of conflict around the world. He said that there are three clear ways to improve the protection of civilians in armed conflict. First, we must ensure greater respect for international humanitarian and human rights law. Second, we must step up the protection of humanitarian and medical missions by implementing his predecessor's recommendations on Resolution 2286, which was adopted by the Council last year. And third, we must do more to prevent forced displacement and find durable solutions for refugees and internally displaced people, he added. His full remarks are online, and also, as we had uh, told you yesterday, the Secretary General will be leaving this afternoon to attend the G7 summit in Sicily, and on Saturday he will participate in the outreach session of the summit, focusing on innovation and sustainable development in Africa. And related to that, our friends at UNICEF today called on the leaders gathering at the G7 to adopt a six-point agenda to keep refu refugee and migrant children safe. The call comes after an updated UNICEF child death figure, which shows that 200 children have died in the migration route in North Africa to Italy this year, a rate of more than one child per day. The six-point agenda urges countries to end detention of children seeking refuge, keep all refugee and migrant children learning, and give them access to health care and other quality services, and promote measures to combat discrimination, xenophobia in transit and destination countries. And one month after the high-level pledging uh, event for the humanitarian crisis in Yemen, the United Nations thanks the members who have fully paid their pledges. And those countries that have fully paid up are Andorra, Australia, Austria, Azerbaijan, Canada, China, Denmark, Ireland, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, New Zealand, the Russian Federation, Slovenia, Sweden, and the United States. The United Nations also welcomes the additional United States announcement of $77 million for the famine response, as well as 4.3 from the European Commission and 1.2 from Norway for the cholera response. As of, 23 million, as of 23 May, the cholera had spread to 19 of Yemen's 22 governorates, with more than four, almost 42,000 suspected cholera or acute uh, watery diarrhea cases and 418 deaths. It's been estimated that there will be at least 100,000 new cases in the next six months, but less than half of health facilities are fully functioning. Since the 1st of May, 1.6 million people have been supported by water, sanitation, and hygiene assistance. The UN has supported the opening of 99 diarrhea treatment centers and 136 oral rehydration corners by providing medicine and other supplies We've also developed plans to combat cholera with a two-pronged approach for which $55 million is required. And also on Yemen, uh, yesterday, the Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Ul Sheikh Ahmed, wrapped up a three-day visit to Sana'a, where he met with political leaders from Ansar Allah and General People's Congress and representatives of other political parties. His discussions focused on possible agreements to prevent the spread of military activities to Hudaydah and practical ways to ensure the resumption of salaries to all Yemeni civil, service, civil servants worldwide. During his visit, the Special Envoy also met with members of the Yemeni Women's Pact for Peace and Security, representatives of civil society organizations, including youth, to discuss current political challenges and security concerns in addition to economic crisis and the recent outbreak of cholera. At the end of his visit, he expressed his deep concern regarding the attack on his convoy while traveling from the airport to the UN compound on the 22nd. Uh, the envoy said that the incident increased his determination to continue with his efforts and to find a negotiated political settlement that serves the best interests of the people of Yemen. The special envoy of visits to Sana'a follows his visit to Saudi Arabia and Qatar, where he met with government officials as part of his efforts to find a political solution. He also met with senior World Bank officials in order to support the World Bank UN collaboration to address the growing food insecurity and economic crisis. 
And our colleagues in the Central African Republic and peacekeeping mission report that the situation in Mangasu remains volatile. Today, a peacekeeping patrol of, uh, exchanged fire with anti-Balaka fighters on two separate occasions outside of Bangasu. Five anti-Balaka are reported to be dead and one peacekeeper slightly injured. Yesterday, peacekeepers also exchanged fire with some anti-Balaka who, who had erected a barricade in the town's Tokoyo sent neighborhood. Two anti-Balaka were killed and one was captured. The mission also recovered weapons from the scene. Peacekeepers continue to secure key areas of the town have begun to clear the Tokoyo neighborhood of people who belong to armed groups. The UN mission reiterates its call on the anti-Balaka and all armed groups to unconditionally cease hostilities and engage in dialogue. Our colleagues are actively engaging with civil society and religious and political leaders to reduce tensions that they call on all communities to seek constructive solutions for a lasting peace. And in Mexico, the, disaster, the Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction opened yesterday evening in the city of Cancun. Speaking at the opening, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed said that while response to natural disasters has improved in many countries, thanks to stronger institutions, better preparedness, and improved early warning systems, economic losses continue to escalate, threatening the progress made on sustainable development goals. Every year, disasters cost the global economy $520 billion and push 26 million people into poverty. Uh, the Deputy Secretary General emphasized that implementing the Sendai framework for disaster reduction is essential to reducing mortality, economic loss, and damage to infrastructure. Also in Cancun, our colleagues from UN Women and the Office for Disaster Risk Reduction uh, launched a new program to address gender inequality in risk. Uh, research shows that women and girls are more vulnerable and more likely to die of disasters, in disasters. The program will open channels for women's leadership and participation in disaster risk reduction, resilience building, and will support women's access to recovery services, products such as micro-insurance, disaster compensation, and social protection. And the crisis in the Kasais in the DRC has severely disrupted life-saving interventions for children in recent months, putting an estimated 400,000 children at risk of severe acute malnutrition, this according to UNICEF. Across the five provinces of Greater Kasai, critical health infrastructure are no longer operational due to conflict. UNICEF says 420 million, 400, excuse me, $40.2 million for its emergency response is needed, stressing that even before the latest wave of violence, the Kasai province were among one of the poorest in the country. And lastly, uh, delegates of the World Health or Assembly in Geneva approved uh, yesterday the organization's proposed program budget, which includes a 3% increase in member state assessed contributions for 2018 and 19. This approved budget sets out the organization's priorities in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. It includes increased investment in the new WHO emergency programs combating antimicrobial resistance. Voluntary contributions have overtaken assessed contributions in providing the majority of WHO's budget. Assessed contributions have remained largely stable prior to yesterday's increase. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is what they have pledged uh, is seventy-seven million dollars in um, in addition to uh, what they had pledged to at the the London conference. So in London, and I, we can get you the figures, but we basically had asked for one point one billion dollars. The countries that I read out are those who have pledged their who have now paid in full their pledges. The seventy-seven million dollars is in addition to that, and that's for famine in. Uh, in Yemen, but I'll I'll get you what the original uh, chunk was. And that's just from the U.S. pledging. That's the just from the U.S. basically saying, in addition to what we've already paid up uh, to meet our pledges, we're giving you an extra seventy-seven million dollars. And are they the biggest donors from all the other countries? Uh, that I can uh, I don't have those numbers, but but we can check pretty easily. Okay. Yes, Matthew, and then sure, and some country-specific things. But I wanted to ask you something. I just uh, now asked the Secretary General about 
what I'd asked you yesterday, whether his speech to ACABQ can be released yeah. and whether his reform proposals will yeah. be released. He seemed to, and maybe I misunderstood it, you can look at the video, but he seemed to see, think that it had been released. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, I think can the, it be released? The, and the, also, the, go ahead. the budget documents uh, for the proposed biennium are, are public documents, and those are available, and that's basically what he presented, uh, the outline of which he presented to the ACABQ yesterday. Is, it, two questions. Is there a problem with releasing, I'm sure there was a written, and data was off the cuff, what he said to ACABQ. And secondly, I've seen and, and published a document called Safety and Security Pillar Model A regarding three ASGs, a, a mixture of, of political affairs and peace building, variety of de delegations of functions. And this is, I mean, maybe he didn't, under, there wasn't time to explain the whole thing. Basically, the idea is if he's proposing reforms, why aren't these proposals public as they are in most countries when reforms Well, I think are these, first of all, these reforms, uh, especially ones that have to involve uh, that involve budgetary issues first have to be approved uh, by and uh, by the member states. So there's an ongoing you know, there's an ongoing discussion uh, on the peace and security architecture. Um, and once things are are formally proposed, I'm sure they will be shared. All the budget documents I think are under I was told a slash seventy two slash six, and those are all available in detail. This chart, I guess, what I'm saying is having seen the I, chart. I don't. I haven't seen the chart. There was so a meeting I, yesterday, so maybe uh, you can ask them. There seemed to have been a meeting that went to six ten yesterday upstairs. Everybody was in it. Mr. Lacroix, Mr. Feltman, her, you know, the whole team was there. And I, I, my understanding is that this chart was discussed, and so I'm asking you. To, guess, it, it, what, ask what, what I'm what I'm telling you sure. is that uh, whatever it, meetings may have occurred upstairs on reform between the Secretary General and his uh, and his top aides, those are those are informal meetings, and I have no documents to share from those. Can you just if, look at the tape of what he said there? Yes, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did look at the tape. Feel I, I did. To me. It feels consistent to me. Well, then it's uh, a double. Speech. Ali, thank you, Stefan. Uh, in the past, uh, UN Secretary Generals used to write letters to leaders of summits like G7, uh, focusing their attention on uh, items on the UN agenda. Yeah. Uh, has the Secretary General? No, it's, as far as I know, there's been no letter sent this year. However, uh, he, Secretary General will be speaking uh, in the outreach uh, session of the G7 on Saturday, uh, and we will be putting out his his remarks. Uh, on Saturday after he delivers them. Right. And uh, ha, w what is his program? Whom is he meeting uh, in Sicily? Right now, the discussions on the bilaterals are still ongoing. Things are fairly fluid. So as soon as, as we're able to um, uh, to announce the bilaterals, we will. And and the other members of the outreach, uh, we can give you that list, but that's a, that's a public uh, list which is available on the G7 website. Oh. Let's see the other participants. Matthew. So yesterday, after you, you emailed me the UNESCO answer on Cameroon, I asked you some questions in writing, one of which seems very simple. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to forego country-specific today because it just seems important. I asked you whether a person named David J. Vinette, who identifies himself online as a senior advisor to the Secretary General, is in fact employed by the UN. Can yeah, you answer he's, that? He's a member of the Secretary General. When was staff? he hired? Uh, he was hired in the last, last few weeks. Okay, but I guess, so why didn't you just, I mean, I know that you have many things to do, but. Right. Why didn't I want? I guess when I email you and say, Does I, I didn't. I didn't see. I, for, I don't know. If, I didn't see your email. So, okay. And I also asked you why, like on the Cameroon answer, there are many people that were interested in that answer. Are there other answers that have been received by your office that you didn't? No, it's, it's pass when on? we have when we have answers, we share them. I didn't have the okay. UNESCO one. I thought I had in my okay, book, okay. and I didn't. I, fine. And, and the, the other thing, I, maybe you hadn't seen it yet, but I'll ask you now. Christina Gayach spoke yesterday in the General Assembly Hall. So I asked you, Indeed. why okay. was that? I did. She spoke. I think at the. Uh, she spoke at the graduation of the UN school, and she is serving as the chair of the uh, of the UN school until uh, the end of June. Okay. Thank you. And I asked you, was anyone held accountable on the audit, the OIOS uh, audit? I, that's all. I, okay. 